So let's get lucky. Let's get lucky. Let's be prepared so that when the opportunity comes, we're ready to jump on that opportunity. And like the salmon, we're moving forward at that moment. We're not hesitating. We're not doubting. We're moving forward. Okay? How do we recognize opportunity? Can I tell? You want my answer? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have a story about that. It's okay. interesting because um, a few years ago, we had all that rain in the spring, and a uh, baseball field next to our house, um, which is full of water weeds. And so they had a little community project where you know, we all met there on a Saturday morning and pulled all the weeds out. And I noticed that when I walked the two blocks home, how many other weeds like were in every yard that I passed, where I drive past that, I walk past another town, and I never really knew it, I never noticed it. And so all of a sudden, because I had been doing something similar, like weeds, all of a sudden I started recognizing these other opportunities, and thought, oh yeah, there are a lot of weeds. Same with our Jeep, we bought a Jeep, and all of a sudden we noticed how many other Jeeps are there. We're talking about the reticular activator. Dana pointed that out with the carrot example. We all said 14, 14, 14, and we said carrot. And that's because our activator, our reticular activator said 14 carrot, 14 carrot, 14 carrot. This is what our subconscious or unconscious mind wants to bring out. And that's what we'll start to see. Uh, James Ray mentioned that in a room at any given time, there's about 2 million bits of information around us. The reticular activator can only handle 150 bits of that information. So when you were weeding, it turned on and said, let's start recognizing weeds. And what are some ways that we turn that on? So that we do start recognizing not only the weeds, but the opportunities daily. Well, I, for me anyways, I feel like I create my opportunities. Okay. That as I'm open and I'm outside the box and I'm committed, the opportunities, that energy goes out and the opportunities come. And if I don't act on them and they pass me by, I'm not going to notice them. So I need to be conscious of every single opportunity that comes up and recognize it. And to do that, I get to be willing to be conscious. Okay. Do affirmations assist with that? Does an affirmation get your mind to say, okay, I'm going to start seeing what it is that I want to create in my life? Does the affirmation actually bring it about? The action can bring it about, but the affirmation will put it in the forefront of your mind so that you start seeing it every time you want to see it. Start noticing Bentleys, Aston Martins, whatever you want to notice, start noticing those things. If that's what you want to bring into your life, start saying those affirmations so that you can draw your attention to that. What we've been conditioned to do with the media is notice the negative stuff. Well, how many positive things happen today? you know there are millions of positive things that happened today that went right for everyone that went wrong? So start recognizing those. Let's talk about that. It may not look, let me hold, hold on that one. It may not look like what you expect. I'll tell you a story about a mule that fell in a well. There was a farmer and he had this mule. And one day he was out walking and fell in this well. It's a deep, deep well. And it started, what, what, what did a mule sound like? Bray, somebody know how to do that sound because I'm not doing <laughs> But it's pretty obnoxious. The farmer hears the sound, he goes over to the well, he sees his mule stuck in the, in the well. So he enlists the service of his friend. He says, my, my mule is stuck in the well. There's no way I'm going to get it out unless I get some assistance. They go look at it, analyze the situation, and they're just seeing that there's no way to get that mule out. So the farmer determines that he's going to bury the mule in the well. So they go get a, a truckload of dirt, and they start shoveling dirt into that well. And this mule is hysterical. They're going to bury me in this well? There's no way I'm staying in here. So it starts shaking that dirt off its back, stomping it into the ground. Every time that, that farmer would throw dirt in there, that mule would shake it off his back and stomp it into the ground. And he would suppress the panic and the hysteria that he was feeling to be logical for a moment focus for a moment on getting out of that well. He would shake the dirt off, stomp it on the ground, and eventually he raised himself out of the well. So, as an opportunity, is it possible that that mule could have just stayed there and been buried alive? Does it sometimes look that you're, being sho you're having dirt shoveled on yourself? 
my life sucks. I don't have money in my pocket. This is terrible. When at that time, is that an opportunity to shake it off, stamp it into the ground, and raise up? Do we have that opportunity? So it may not look like what you expect. And what I can tell you about expectations, and I know this from Dina, is that when you held an expectation on something, you will always be disappointed. Because nobody and nothing will ever reach your expectations. So let's talk about that. You get to take action on anything that comes your way. So, Wayne, I want you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you $10,000 to drive my car for me. Are you open to doing that? Absolutely. Okay. You drive fast? Yep. Okay. Good deal. We'll meet tomorrow morning. Uh, you drive. I'll have some buddies with me. I'm just going to have some ski masks on and some guns. No big deal. You open to doing that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you're going to the ski resort. <laughs> <laughs> you may think, you know, they're, they're, we're just going to the ski resort, right? Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, we just got to stop and do some business at the bank first, okay? So you're going to drive us to the bank, we're going to run in, get some money out, and we'll head up to the ski resort. You open to doing that? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go do that. <laughs> now, is that wisdom? Is that acting on everything in wisdom? No. So when I say act on everything, that's not acting on everything blindly. That's using wisdom. So if somebody says you're going to make a lot of money, make sure you're doing it legally, honestly, in ways that make sense. Okay. Well, and, and with that acting on wisdom, that refers back to what Bart was talking about, even in our personal economy, is are we, you know, really how many people are using wisdom in their personal economy with what they're doing with their money? Right. We talk about wisdom as well in accounting. Uh, how many are fully accountable with your books? Are you going out there? Is it wisdom to go out there to start a business or run a business and spend the money and do whatever if you're not taking an account of what you're spending, what you're doing? Is that wisdom? No. If, if you're not sure how to improve your personal economy, you're just going to go out, try and invest here, try and invest there with no knowledge, no clarity, is that wisdom? Does that mean we don't act before we gain the wisdom? No, we can take action simultaneously or before we gain the wisdom. Sometimes we gain the wisdom as we go. We gain a lot of knowledge from taking, making choices, and learning from them. So the one thing that, uh, that is most important to all of this is that we do it now. What if I told you there is no future? A lot of you already know this. What if I told you there is no future? <laughs> and what if I told you there is no past? Yeah, isn't that rough? There, there is only now. There's no other moment than this moment. Um, even when we're living in the future, we're going to be living in the now and the future. Even when we think of the past, when we were living in the past, it was now. There is no other moment but now. It's the only opportunity we have to move forward, the only time we have to take action, to trust, to intend, is now. And when do we see those results? Now. We see them now, even though that may be a week from now, or the now that's a month from now, or a year from now. We make those choices in this moment, and we do that by being in the moment. There's a quote by one of my favorite authors that is powerful, uh, Chantel. Can you get off the phone? Will you read that for us? <laughs> Tomorrow never comes, and yesterday never comes back. So live today and it's to its fullest, so that you, your yesterdays will be remembered with happiness, and your tomorrows will be full of brightness and hope. Isn't that awesome? So now let's show you who the author is on that. Do you have any tissues? That's the truth, guys. Tomorrow never comes, yesterday never comes back. We can learn from those things, we can plan for tomorrow, but we get to live now to its fullest so that we can have joyful tomorrows. And remember the past with joy. This is all about joy. So let's, uh, let me share one thing that's tough. Have you learned a lot of good information today? Yeah. yeah. What are some of the things that you've taken from today that you can implement in your life now? Okay. Action. <laughs> Taking, you've learned more than that. Did you learn the, the power of what Dina taught you? And Angie, 